Hello, my friends, and welcome. We have some tremendous news that are coming from the front lines. Today, Ukraine struck the bridge of Chongyar. This is over here. This bridge is very important for the Russian supplies. According to the information which is coming from the Russian side, Russia uses this road to supply 70% of all of their weaponry to the front lines in Zaporizhia and in Kherson. Actually, I'm quite surprised about that fact because there is also the railroad connection, it also has the bridge and I thought that the Russian army mostly uses the railroad to supply its forces because historically it's like that. Russia uses mostly the railroads, but here they use the normal vehicle roads. We have even the moment of the bridge attack, so for sure this is the Storm Shadow cruise missile where there were two, I'm not sure. It could be the video issue because this cruise missile moves very fast, so we see it as two actually it's one and it exploded then it hit the bridge well there's the big hole in the bridge but still it holds the construction and it's not yet been destroyed with a single storm shadow hit but still because the bridge was damaged russia closed it for all of the vehicles transportation and that is why they have to make the round around that bridge so they have to go through Armansk. By the way, the station and the main supply hub in Armansk was also attacked by the Storm Shadow cruise missile. Unfortunately, there are no any bridges in that area. After Armansk, they have to use the secondary roads that are not in a good condition to get to the main road to supply their troops in the Parisia or Kherson regions. Well, it's better to say that for the Kherson, they may supply through this road, but for Zaporizhia, there is no other way out for them rather than to perform this round trip more than 130 kilometers long. Even now, Russia is struggling with their supplies. They are coming very late, they are coming with a very poor quantity. But after the Chongyar bridge is cut, Russia may face the catastrophic outcomes for their supplies. It's not coming yet since they have the alternate route, but to organize that stuff, well, I don't think that they'll organize it properly. So what they did before, they delivered all of the goods to Jankoi, and after Jankoi they took the normal roads, the red route to get to Melitopol. Now this route doesn't exist any longer, and the purpose Purple route is now in use. The grey route is also not good because the bridge over here is very narrow and unable to withstand the weight of the heavy vehicles. They also have the other alternate very long routes over here, but it goes very close to Novakahovka, very close to the front lines actually. So the purple route is the one that they will use since today. However, there were other strikes on the supplier road that is leading to Melitopol. The road was targeted near to Yakimivka and in Melitopol itself. As you see, Ukraine little by little cut supplies for the Russian army in the Zaporizhia region. The the problem for the bridge is that the Ukrainian side is unable to use it in case of the advancement of Ukrainian army towards Crimea. Russia would have eliminated it in any case then Ukrainian army start to advance to Crimea, so we would lose it in any case. So that is why it's better to do it right now to cut supplies for the Russian Federation. As you can see there are lots of the lakes and water obstacles in that area and still there are some areas where Ukrainian army may proceed because there are no any bridges in this area near to Armansk. But the biggest road was still near to Chengar and I took it many times because I used to live in Crimea and then you go to Kyiv by car, you go through this road. Overall, the situation with Chengar bridge is very similar to Antonovsky bridge in Kherson. So Ukraine targeted that one cutting the Russian supplies last year. Because Russia lost their main supply line, they were forced to leave all of that place. They were running away and finally they blown up the bridge themselves. So the same thing would have happened with that Chengar bridge. It was understandable that that bridge is dead already, so it's better to do it right now to cut supplies. 
And now the Russian army here is in a deep problem. Still they have supplies which are coming from the Rostov on Don, but for them they need to cover lots of the distance through Mariupol to get to Melitopol. So it was their main supply line. The pro-Russian occupation administration already said that the attack that was done today using the Storm Shadow cruise missile just doesn't mean anything for the Russian army. It will continue as before. The same thing they said that last year about the Antonovsky bridge. Doesn't solve anything for Ukraine. The special military operation will continue. Yes, it may continue, but for what cost and with what problems. By the way, this guy is dead already. He lost his knife in a car accident. Now it's turn for this guy. President Zelensky in his speech today said that Russia for sure mined the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, so they're ready to demolish it at any moment. He called for international organizations to take care about this issue. Russians should leave the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and hand it over to Ukraine peacefully. But the International Atomic Agency report says that they are aware about the information that some of the mines were placed at the cooling pond, but at the time the general director visited the place, there were no any mines near to the pond or inside the power plant. However, the International Atomic Agency is aware of previous placements of mines outside the plant perimeter. They also say that the main safety functions of the facility would not be significantly affected. But they are following the issue with a great attention, they say. Well, I just hope that they are right. But based on the previous experience, then Russia blown up the Novakovka dam, I am not sure about the Russian actions in Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. And our president told about it many times. By the way, we have some success today near to Krasnohorivka. It is happening just over here, near to the old border between the self-proclaimed DPR and Ukrainian-controlled territory. So Krasnogorivka is here, Marinka is over here. Russia tries to get this village under control for more than one year and a half, but here Ukraine moves forward. And if we go to the timeline, it was yesterday and it is today day right now we went to the old border as for the south part of ukraine over here we have some of the movement near to staromayorsky yesterday and today you can see ukrainian army continued to advance here's the small tiny river there is also the natural obstacle in this territory that's why russia still keeps rivnopil under their control the urajina village has not yet been confirmed taken by Ukrainian army, as Prigozhin said yesterday. According to Reuters, Pentagon approved the cluster munitions for Ukrainian army. They will be used against the Russian trenches and defense lines. We need them a lot, but cluster munitions are forbidden in many of the countries. In that case, I think that we may use those because they are not forbidden, I think, in the United States of America if they use them. Again, it is just the Pentagon approval. The next step is the Senate approval and the White House. Russia again tries to assault from the northeast part to take control over Luhansk and Donetsk Oblast. The fighting is ongoing very close to Crimea. Russia even uses their modern tanks pro reef. You can see the silhouette of the turret, so for sure it's T-90M pro reef. As Putin said, the best tank in the world. And let's see what happened to the tank before the Russian infantry was lost near to this tower, then they tried to assault to Ukrainian positions. Well, here we have the tank and here we don't have the tank because it probably hit the mine. So it doesn't really matter what tank do you have, the best one or the worst one, the mines will do their job. There were some other videos published today, but I shared them on my Telegram channel, not on this resource. I have the link in the video description, so you may check my Telegram for more information from the front lines, let's say. Russia lost one more helicopter, this time in Belarus during the normal training flights. As you can probably see, we have the Z symbol on the tail and the crew is reportedly injured. 
more about the Chungar Bridge. Actually, there are two of them. One is small and one is wide and big. This is the new road. This one is out of order, but this one still could be used by the Russian army, unfortunately. But I think that not for a long time. By the way, the railroad bridge goes through the same lake and located that side several hundred meters away from the road bridge. It also hasn't been damaged yet. But I'm sure that the Ukrainian army is working on that issue and we're gonna cut supplies for Russia. Mainly it's already been cut because Russia used this main road. Well, now they can use the small road, but I'm not sure whether it can withstand the heavy weight of the tanks. Yes, I know that it is not about Ukraine, but internet and the media went crazy about this case. I will not tell you what happened there, because you know it for sure from any sort of the information resource. That is what worried me. Because in general, those guys had chosen this trip deliberately. They understood the risks of this self-made uncertified submarine, but still went to the deep dive. Yes, it is the horrible situation for them personally, but I think we have the bigger problem in the world right now. Like with Zaporizhia nuclear power plant that may affect many nations, many countries, many people around. And people who peacefully live in their countries are not willing to risk their lives. They want just to leave. They don't want to be exposed to the radiation fallout or something. So I think that information should be spread around the same way as this information was spread around everywhere. Maybe I'm wrong, but we don't have the proper reaction to much global and much more terrible events that happen to people. Sometimes I think that the situation in the world develops in the way that we all could be in that submarine. It seems like the world leaders are not willing to control this submarine at all, and the main anchor Putin with his crazy Russian empire is towing us all to the deep problem. There is the resolution project that will be voted in the Senate saying that United States of America should respond in case Russia would use the nukes on the Ukrainian territory, because by doing so the radiation may touch the other countries, the countries of NATO. Well, that is interesting, but do you really think that the United States uh, would respond in case of the Russian nuke attack on Ukraine? Yes, they may do it, because they do afraid of the next step of Vladimir Putin. They will not respond with the nukes, but they may assassinate the main guy in Russia. That is what the President Zelensky said today. He said that he doesn't believe that Russia would use nukes on Ukraine, but in that case, the Western world would find the way to get rid of Putin. My friends, I'm gonna keep you updated on situation in Ukraine. Now, please don't forget to press the like button to this video. And also, if you want to support my job, there will be some of the links in the video description just below. You may support me on Patreon, on the sponsorship of this channel, or on the PayPal, whichever you like. Thank you so much for your awesome help and awesome support. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.